The expedition. Being an account in war words and artwork of the 2358 AD voyage to Darwin 4. But my man, my favorite artist, Wayne the Wayne Barlow. Kind of almost look like, sounds more like the guy who helped me the Godzilla series, like another Barlow. It says, Grad Explorer uh, and Discover of Darwin 4. <laughs> the man that helped us me find the planet. Introduction. Look at Sea Strider. Uh, look at that ship. Huh. Cool to see Leo and Ike. Think the girls. It says one group of rules. Nice. Um, well, looks like a Robux. An, uh, it's an audio video slash audio pod, but almost looking like a skewer. Oh, look, a prong head. That's a. Huh. Uh, this is the. Simat. The bolt tongue, which is related to the arrow tongue, and lives in the tundra. The grasslands and plains. Ray, the Raybacks and the Gyro Sprinters. That's a Rayback. Oh, it's like a carnival. It's like a little hunter. Huh. And here's the gyro sprinter. The biped alien and the much about the size of an a almost twice the size of an African antelope. And there's his head. Looks really uh uh That's right, scary Oh I see a skewer in the distance. The Perari Ram. More like, I don't know, what kind of creature does the prairie rim represent? Because, huh, the arrow tongue, the arrow tongue, yep, the creature that's about the size of a T-Rex. Hmm. And then here's the thorn back. More like he... A tripod alien. There's the butt. There's the arrow tongue. In all of its glory. Uh -huh. Oh, look, a jet darter. Jet darter. We don't really know. Oh, so that's how it eats. It's like a tiny little mouth thing. Huh. But the tree and the pri prismalope. Oh, there's the tree. There's what the butcher tree looks like. Oh, so that's how it gets. Because it'll be like, shoot! Just doing that. It's over there. There's the uh, the forest and periphery, the grove back, the second largest creature on the planet of Darwin Four. And 
what's next to it? It's an arrow tongue. And here's the sage turn. I see a Dagoris, a Rayback, a few other creatures, the arrow tongues, and then the growth back. Technically, the Dagoris is about the same, almost as, is twice as tall of a human. Of a human, to be honest. And there's what it looks like. Flipsticks. Right. Well, let's see. Hmm. Kind of mostly more looks like a jumpy cactus. And there's some creature on the planet that, that might eat these things. And these things. Stand 60 meters tall. Holy crap. And look, oh no, it did grow back. And the arrow tongue's like, yes! I can't wait to suck its juicy insides. <laughs> that poor girl bag. Forest, slider, and gulper. Huh. The pack park for the pocket forest. Wait, does that, is that like literally water? Huh. Because in the show, it doesn't, only water's been only shown a little bit because it's here. Yeah. And there's the forest gulper. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the Gronkle from How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> and this is how it does it. It's like, wait until that creature goes into the mouth. Goes into his gaping maw. Huh. Oh, my per one of my personal favorites. The Daggerist. You don't know, it's also this on the cover of the book. Technically, the vampire of the pocket forest. There it is. <laughs> I don't know how these and look a trunk sucker. Oh, these are a, ver a variety of trunk suckers. There's a variety of trunk suckers that the daggerists like to hunt. Here's how it's hunt. It's like even though it looks like it's part of its body, but rather it can literally dislodge itself to make so that they can act like a spear. Which can pierce through the trunk suckers. I like a trunk sucker, but I would not. If I were a trunk sucker, I would not be next to these guys. I'll be scared to see these stains in our hand snapper. And look, a little jet dart, a jet darter. The only jet darts we've ever seen in the show are only pink, but we never get to see a multicolored one like these. Oh, I get what they call it a fin snapper because I think that thing is meant to snap the fins of these jet darters when it gets the chance. See, it's like. That's how it works. It's like a, it's like the assassin frog's proboscis. I don't, I don't know what it is. The amoebic sea and litor, littoral zones. A sack back. I think I know what that is. I think that's supposed to be for like a meeting thing. I don't know. Yeah, I was right. That's a buried and inverted female sack back. So they, when uh, they go next to it, when they find each other, they can lodge their trunk-like mouths together 
uh, to mate. Huh. It looks like it's dead. Dead, to be honest. The Emperor Sea Strider, the Kaiju of the of Darwin IV. And what is a little tiny nymph? Eh, maybe. Hmm. Here's the Sea Strider nymph, which is a flyer. And I can see where it's about its of its growth stage, where it will give up its flight life. To walk. Sea hmm. Strider Skull and Litharolops. Oh, well, little loves are like the antelopes of the of the planet. I just love Darwin Four so much. I mean, I highly recommend to get this book. It's a remake version of the old book. Old book. You could get it out of hardcover at like fifty nine ninety nine, or you could get get it like or you could get a paperback for. For forty nine ninety nine, but I would highly recommend have this book, but also highly recommend to get the documentary Alien Planet. Planet. But I mean, look, this is the literal lope to me. Ah, I feel bad for that literal lope that got killed by the skewer. Well, two skewers actually. And I see the beach quills attacking that poor creature. I already see what happened, what they did to that grow back in the documentary. Oh my goodness. Str stripe wing. Huh. That almost reminds me of like creature, creatures you would find in the mist. If anybody had ever seen that movie. The mountains. Of this planet, the killed slider. Hmm. More like the mountain go, more like the mountain goats of the planet. Spring wing. Oh no, the. I think these are meant to be the like buffalo, but these are guys are the. Mountain goats. Avalanche victim. Avalanche victim. A dead Crag Springer. Oh, <laughs> that sucks for him. Hmm. It's kind of like. Like the bladder horn, more like the elks of this of Darwin Four. Or not like technically like elks. I think it's more like moose. Like they're the moose of Darwin IV. Here's the tundra. F4 individual alien. The Arctic sledge, sedge slider, and tundra plow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alex, I, to be honest, I can't draw that well, but these drawings are technically amazing. They are fantastic. In my opinion, I mean, don't get me wrong. He also did. Barlow also did help her. The James Cameron's Avatar. So I have a uh, sad, sad slider. Hmm. 
A poor individual. Looks like her. Oh. Aunt and Mummy Nest Flyer. The buffalo. The buffaloes of the planet. Buffaloes and bison. The aunt herd parting around the mummy nest. Huh. I can see their secondary air sacs and to get their name from. Oh, oops. Ice Crawler and Rhyme Runner. I think that's a Rhyme Runner, and these are the Ice Crawlers. A monoped alien. The air. And there's the sheep again. The skewer and Simon. And there it is. The giant pterosaur of Darwin 4. That'd be terror. It'll be a terrifying encounter if you actually. Had, it'll be terrifying if you actually encountered a skewer. And these are Rogo, Rogus, Floater. <laughs> to be honest, I'm just trying to say this, but it almost reminds me like Aunt, those alien humanoid heads you found in Rick and Mor that Rick and Morty episode. Show me what you got. <laughs> That's what I'm just thinking about about this thing. Kind of reminds me of that. The Emma, the Ebony Blister Wing. Huh. Oh, it's bigger than all these creatures. That's the biggest aerial creature I've ever seen. And look, uh, the Eo Sapien, the uh, Homo habilis of this planet, of Darn 4. And this is an, that's it. I think that's supposed to be like a same yeah, That poor creature. Departure. actually did work for the Pacific Rim. That's nice. Nice. That'd be it. 
incredible. I just really lo love this. <laughs> the book that Discovery Channel Alien Planet was based on. In the 20 of the 24th century. Ooh. Now that is a beauty.